According to the Christian group Open Doors, Malaysia is one of the worst countries in the world in regards to Christian persecution. What does persecution look like in Malaysia? Every ethnic Malay is assumed to be Muslim as defined by the Malaysian Constitution. This means that any ethnic Malay who converts to Christianity is at risk of breaking the law and being punished under Sharia law. These converts can also face incredible pressure from their families and the broader community. The country's political instability. There have been four prime ministers since 2018, and this has led to more political parties trying to appeal to conservative Islamic voters. A conservative Islamic political party has made gains at both local and national levels, and it is now the largest party, though it's not in power. Party leaders regularly make statements of opposition against religious and ethnic minorities, including Christians. Even historic Christian denominations or nonprofits are watched by authorities. And any group seen as being more open to evangelism is at risk for official interference. Who is the most vulnerable people to persecution in Malaysia? Well, as ethnic Malays who convert from Islam are the most vulnerable to persecution. There were ongoing cases of Christians wishing to change their official religion from Islam and being denied. In an effort to stem the rise of the more Islamic political party, the ruling government, which many observers hoped would implement reforms, instead decided to continue to emphasize Islam and favor Malay Muslim-centric policies. The discrimination and marginalization that Malay Christians experience continues to be widespread and shows no signs of letting up. Malaysia is a very interesting situation for Christians because it completely depends on your ethnic background as to how you will be treated. It's acceptable for people from a Chinese or Indian background to follow Christ. However, Malay society considers Islam an intrinsic part of its identity. If you are an ethnic Malay and you say, I'm not a Muslim, I'm following Jesus Christ, you will have all kinds of problems. Some are taken to reconversion centers where they try to talk you out or force you out of being a follower of Christ and force you back to Islam. We need to understand the differences in how Christians are treated in Malaysia. For example, a Chinese Christian probably doesn't have any trouble in Malaysia, but a Malay Christian faces intense persecution. Pastor Raymond Cole is a prime example of this persecution in Malaysia. He was accused of evangelizing Malays and they said he was a danger and a threat to the state of Malaysia. He disappeared off the streets of Malaysia and hasn't been seen since. The Constitution of Malaysia states, Islam is the religion of the Federation, but other religions may be practiced in peace and harmony. But is this really what this statement means? Federal and state governments have the power to mandate doctrine for Muslims and promote a Sunni Islam above all other religious groups. Sedition laws criminalize speech that promotes ill will, hostility, or hatred on the grounds of religion. This means you cannot even speak against the Prophet Muhammad in Malaysia without fear of being arrested. The relationship between Sharia and civil law remains unresolved in the legal system, with state governments having responsibility for Sharia law. The majority of citizens are Muslims, with Buddhism, Christianity, and Hinduism as other major religions in Malaysia.
the Malaysian government arrests several individuals each year for blasphemy. The government continues to take action against individuals who diverge from the official interpretation of Islam, including subjecting some to rehabilitation centers that taught and reinforced government-approved Islamic practice. This means when a Malay Muslim starts following Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, they are subject to intense persecution, not only from the government, but from their families and, for the, and from the Islamic community as a whole. Human rights organizations and religious leaders continue to express extreme concern about the increasing Islamization of the Malay people. The Malaysian constitution names Islam as the religion of the federation and gives parliamentary powers to make provisions regulating Islamic religious affairs. Muslims who seek to convert to other religions must first obtain approval from Sharia courts. And the Sharia courts seldom grant such requests, especially for those born Muslim ethnic Malays who are seeking to follow Jesus Christ. Penalties for apostasy vary by state. In some states, apostasy is a criminal offense and punishable by a fine or a prison term. Some courts even impose strokes by a cane for, for apostasy. My dear Malay brothers and sisters, Despite this evil persecution that the Malaysian government has against you, you can still become a follower of Jesus Christ. Now, it might say in your constitution that you can't do this, but keep in mind, my dear Malaysian friends, the government cannot control your heart. Jesus Christ came to this earth lived as a man, the second person of the Trinity, the Son of God, and he died on a cross to save you from your sin and to rescue you from the evil Islamic religion. Yes, that's right. Islam keeps you from the truth, my dear Malaysian friends. Islam gives the wrong information about the most important topic in the world, and that's who Jesus Christ truly is. The Quran gets it wrong about Jesus. The Quran says that Jesus is merely a man, he's just a prophet. That is absolutely false. Jesus Christ is Lord God, Yahweh in the flesh. He is fully God and fully man, sent to redeem you from your sin and from your false religion of Islam. And all the sins of mankind were laid upon Jesus Christ on the cross, and he died on that cross for you, my dear Malaysian friends, because he loves you. Yes, God loved you enough, my dear Malaysian friends, to leave his throne in heaven, to become a man, to live as a man, and to die as a man. His humanity died, but his divinity never ceased to exist. He remains fully God and fully man. And this same Jesus Christ rose from the dead three days later. And his resurrection proves that he is the Lord. And he's calling you. Yes, you, my dear Malaysian friend. My dear Malaysian friends, you have watched this video. And it's come to the point where you need to make a decision. The decision is, will you be a follower of Christ? Or will you continue to follow the false prophet Muhammad? And will you continue to be a part of a false religion, Islam? It's your decision, my dear M Malaysian friends. But know this, Jesus loves you, he died for you, and he rose from the dead to prove that he is the Lord. Now what you must do is you must confess your sins, you must repent, you must know that you're a sinner, you must realize that you are lost without the Lord Jesus Christ and you must accept him, receive him as your Lord and as your Savior and believe that he rose from the dead. And the Bible says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved.
believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This everlasting life is available to you, to my dear Malaysian friends. All you need to do is trust him. Believe that Jesus is the Lord and that he died for your sins and you dedicate your life to him. He is your Lord. It's time to, for you to stop being a rebellious subject, my dear Malaysian friends, and start following the true king, the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you do that today, my dear Malaysian friends, you will never regret it.